Hi everyone. In this video, I'd like to show you how to control your fireplace with an Amazon Echo. Um, so what I have here is a heat and glow gas fireplace and to turn it on and off, I have this RF remote. And so what we're going to do is pick up the signals that are emitted from this remote and then uh, send them again on demand with an Arduino and an RF transmitter. Uh, we're going to, so we're going to have to send the same signals that are emitted from this remote to the fireplace to get it to turn on and off. So for a quick demonstration, Alexa, turn on the fireplace. And there we go. And to turn it right off, Alexa, turn off the fireplace. And there you have it. So to get started with this project, we need a couple things. Um, in order to pick up the RF codes that are being emitted from this transmitter so we can replay them later, uh, we're going to use an SDR device. This is a new Elec NESDR Mini 2. Got this on Amazon for about 20 bucks. Uh, this is a ESP8266 Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller. Um, you really use any other um, like network enabled Arduino device. Um, for, for this to work. Uh, I got this on Amazon for about you know, five or six bucks. And then finally we have the actual uh, transmitter itself. This larger piece above is the, the receiver. Uh, I just bought these in a pair and then the, on the bottom is the actual transmitter TX303A and this came from AppliedWireless.com. Um, so the key for this whole project is really to find a um, a transmitter that will work on the same frequency or close to the frequency that your current remote uses. So in order to find that out, we're going to have to um, we're going to do a little research into this remote. I'll show you how to do that and we'll find out exactly what frequency that this device is supposed to be sending uh, the codes on and then we'll be able to use the, the SDR device to uh, tune into that frequency, pick up the codes, and then uh, hopefully be able to replay them. So real quick, we'll just take a look at this remote. It's a very simple operation. Uh, it has three modes that we'll see on here, but only one button to control the operation of the actual fireplace. So right now, if we press mode, uh, you can see that it turns to on, so the fireplace will be turned on right now. Um, if we press mode again, it goes into, it turns off the fireplace, but goes into a thermo mode. So this, um, this remote actually has a thermostat on it that you can set to um, like a, a minimum temperature. Um, and then if, if the temperature of the room or, you know, around where this remote is, if this, uh, if the temperature falls below the setting, then it'll kick on the fireplace automatically. So that's what the thermo mode is. And then if we press it one more time, uh, we're back to the, just a straight, straight up off state. So we need to find out exactly what frequency this remote sends codes on. So to do that, uh, you can, most RF remotes that come with any other, you know, appliances, household items, that, you know, that you may find, will have FCC ID on here. So on here we have ULERF-5A. So if we go online and search up this FCC ID, we'll get a lot of information about this remote will be able to tell um, you know what frequency it sends on without having to even open up the remote. So that's another goal of this project. I didn't want to actually hack into the existing remote at all in case uh, you know a wife or anyone else wanted to use the fireplace. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll Google this, uh, this FCC ID and then um, we'll see what we can find. So I just want to show you guys this website real quick. Um, there's a lot of, there's a wealth of information on here. Um, if you look up any device by its FCC ID. Um, so quick Google search brought me here. Um, it'll tell you more information about the remote itself, um, what frequency it runs at, 3 or 3.8 in my case. And then it has a bunch of other information down here. You can see the external photos, internal photos, uh, schematics of the circuit board um, of the remote. A uh, bunch of other information here, which is helpful. Um, you'll you'll need this information when you're looking for a, a transmitter that operates on the the correct frequency. Um, so as for the actual transmitter that I have, I found it on AppliedWireless.com. This is a TX three hundred three AT. It operates at the three hundred three point eight two five megahertz frequency, um, which 
seem to work just fine uh, in my case. So real quick, some other software that we'll need for this. Um, on Mac, you can use GQRX. Uh, what this allows you to do is that you'll be able to tune to different frequencies and then be able to record um, the actual signals being emitted from the remote. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can use SDR Sharp. Um, and then another software we'll need um, is Audacity. And what this will do is allow us to open up the actual sound file and then be able to determine exactly which codes are being emitted from the from the remote. So the first step of this process is to figure out which codes are being sent from the remote. My fireplace can be placed in the three different states, on, off with thermostat, and off completely. So we'll first start by picking up the on signal. So we'll fire up our software to find radio. Let's go ahead and test this out to make sure it works by tuning into an FM station. So that works. We'll change the mode to AM. And now let's set the frequency to the frequency that the remote should be sending signals over. So we'll press a button on the remote. And we can see that the signal is strongest at 303.74. So now go ahead and reset the remote. Now let's um, let's record the signal. The first signal we want to pick up is on. So we'll play and hit record, and we'll press the button on the remote. Now we have our on signal saved. We'll do the same thing for off with thermostat. Finally, we'll save the off signal. So now to read the signal, we'll open up the file with Audacity. So what we're looking at here is called on-off keying. If we zoom in, we'll see the same signal being sent multiple times, in this case 10. If we zoom in a little more, we'll see that each of these sections, called symbols, are the same. It means that the same code is being sent 10 times in a row. So to read the actual value, we can just zoom in on one of these symbols, and we can see changes in the carrier wave. A long section would be a 1, and a short section would be a 0. So for example, this first section, we can read it out as 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. The next section, Is the same one 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 zero. The third section will be one zero 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 one, and we'll go ahead with the rest of this symbol. Let's write that down. And 
there you go. That's the code to turn on the Firefox. We'll go ahead and just do this for the next two signals. So now that we have our signals collected, let's try to send one out using our microcontroller. So in order to get started with programming our ESP8266, we'll need to get go out and get this library from GitHub called RC Switch. Um, it does say that it operates on the 433 or 315 megahertz devices. You can disregard that because it does work for any other, um, most other frequencies. It really just depends on what, what kind of transmitter you're using. Um, <clears throat> we'll also need to go get the uh, the pin layout for the uh, for the ESP8266. Um, you can just Google that. This is the one I have for the high let go um, module. And then we'll also need to go get the data sheet for our transmitter. Um, and this will tell us exactly how to wire this up. Okay, so I've gone ahead and wired up the transmitter to the microcontroller using the pinout shown here. Uh, I'm not sure if the transmitter requires both ground connections, but we'll have them anyway. So what I have here is, is a script that's going to use the RC switch library. And we're going to send the off signal every second. And then we're going to capture this and we're going to look at the signal and see how it compares to the original off signal that the remote was sending. So let's go ahead and do that. I have this script uploaded. And we can see that this transmitter is um, sending out on the slightly higher frequency. That should be okay. And we'll go ahead and just record one of these. And we'll just try to compare this signal to the signal, the original off signal. Let's clean this up a little bit. So we can see that the overall signal length of the, uh, the off signal from the remote is longer than that of the one we just recorded, generated from our microcontroller. So let's go ahead and see if we can try to line these up a little better. So I've gone ahead and updated our code with this pulse length value of 430. It should hopefully make our overall transmission a little bit longer and more in line with that of the original remote. I believe the default pulse length provided by the RC switch library is 320. So I've gone ahead and uploaded this to the microcontroller. Let's capture that signal and see how it compares. So I've just gone through the previous step to capture the, uh, the new signal that we sent with the new pulse line. So now we can see the original off signal at the top here. In the middle is the one that we initially transmitted from our microcontroller. And then the bottom is the one with the updated pulse line. So it looks like the pulse length overall matches that of the original remote. So let's go ahead with the next step of adding this updated code to our microcontroller together with a web server. So we have a script here that, um, that was derived from one of the example scripts found under ESP8266 Wi-Fi wi -Fi web server. And so we just incorporated some of the RC switch code that we wrote in our previous script. And all we'll do here is basically turn on and off the fireplace by sending the on and off codes. So we scroll down here to see kind of how this works. So if a request comes in, you could use a browser to do this. If a request comes in with a path of GPIO slash zero, 
then it'll send the off signal to the fireplace and also turn off the LED. In my case, turning off the LED is done by sending by setting the pin to high. And then if a request comes in with GPIO slash one, then we'll send the on signal to the fireplace. So we'll upload this to our microcontroller and we'll give this a try. So we go ahead and upload the script to the microcontroller. So right down, down here, you can see that we have it um, wired up to the, the transmitter. Um, so once we're connected in the serial monitor, I'll tell you what IP address that we're connected to. So if we visit that in the browser with uh, slash GPIO slash zero, um, we should send the off signal to the fireplace. So the fireplace is already turned off, so we, nothing happened there. So if we switch that to one slash one, you hear the beep and the fireplace turns on. And we now have a red LED to let us know that the fireplace is on. And again, if we go back to GPIO slash zero, the fireplace should turn off, which it does, and our LED has turned off. So let's, the next step is go ahead and get this hooked up to our Amazon Echo. The final step of this project is to integrate the Echo with our microcontroller. Thankfully, there's a library out here on GitHub that will help us uh, do this. There's this library that will basically set your microcontroller to act as a web service um, that um, basically allows it to, to act like a Belkin Wemo device. Um, and then the Echo, by default, already understands how to talk to these devices, so there's no other software, no other skill you need to load on the Echo for this to happen. Um, so once we can modify this script a little bit um, to include some of our RC switch code, um, then we can just go ahead and upload it to our microcontroller and then we'll set our Echo to, um, to discover it and then hopefully we can turn our fireplace on and off and see what happens. So I'm going ahead and um, uploaded the code to the um to the microcontroller, we have it powered up and it's also connected to our uh, RF transmitter here. Um, I've run the discovery operation in the, uh, the, the Alexa app. So uh, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Alexa, turn on the fireplace. Okay. There we go. And we can also see that our red light is on. Alexa, turn off the fireplace. see the fire just gone out. Um, thank you all for watching. This was a fun project. Hopefully um, you guys learned a little something. I sure did. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments and uh, be sure to check out the uh, source code on the GitHub page um, in the description. Thanks for watching.